Uncharted 4. If you're new to the Uncharted games, you should know that this series is a third person action game with platforming and cover shooter elements. The series follows a professional treasure hunter, Nathan Drake, on his adventure for hidden treasures, discovering lost cities, and uncovering history's greatest perplexities. We've joined Nate on his pursuit to El Dorado, his discovery of Shambhala, and his adventure leading to the Pillars of Iran. Now, in Uncharted 4, we join Drake on his biggest adventure yet, Captain Avery's hidden pirate treasure. Let's take a look. Uncharted 4 will be rated on six key points. Each category is worth one point in order to keep a nice, fair balance. And it goes without saying, there will be spoilers, so skip right. Nathan Drake seems to always be busy uncovering a mysterious secret throughout history. But shortly upon starting, we join Nate in his retirement, and he's married journalist Elena Fisher. But yeah, so they're married, and they let me, they play Crash Bandicoot. We even find out Nate has a brother that he's kept his secret and repressed memories about, I guess. I don't know why he didn't tell anybody. Well, but apparently he died, so, uh, yeah. Oh, but wait, there's another twist. <laughs> He's still alive! The first four to five chapters are used to primarily set up the characters for the rest of the game. Upon Sam's arrival, oh yeah, his brother's name is Sam, Nate is given a reason to begin his lust for hunting treasure again. And from here, Nate, Sam, and longtime friend Sully begin their search for Captain Avery's treasure. Their first stop is finding a relic, which leads them to a black market auction, where they run into an old accomplice, Rafe Adler, and his new partner, I'm Nadine Ross. But after crashing the party, the gang uh, goes to Scotland, followed by uh, Madagascar 2, Electric Boogaloo. After finding what they needed on the island, Nate, Sam, and Sully return back to the hotel to pack up and... Oh, sh <laughs> shit. How's the Malaysia job going, Nate? Well, after that, they... Wait a minute. How did she find him? The exact room and everything. Chuck it up to, I guess, Sully told her. Why would he? He didn't tell her. He was surprised also that she was there. How'd she find it? Well, after that, Nate and Sam travel to the last stop on the search for Avery's treasure. The island of Libertalia. An island by pirates, or for pirates. While discovering the lost city, Nathan and Sam find out more about each other. Well, until their paths cross with Rafe, and Nate discovers that Sam has basically been lying to him about everything. And what does Rafe do? He takes Sam hostage and leaves Nate for dead. And Elena finds him again. Well, except this time, Sully actually told her where Nate would be. Anywho, Elena and Nate find their way to Avery's mansion to save Sam. But only to find an underground tunnel filled with the. Uh, Mummies! Mummies? Oh no, thank you. I've already had enough of Brendan Fraser. The one, um, two months now, just leave Brendan Fraser. I don't think so. So, dodging all the. What the hell is this? They exit the tunnel and they save Sam. Nate finds out that the treasure is on a ship, and the two brothers find a way onto the vessel, and here we get a showdown we've been waiting for. Nadine betrays Rafe and leaves him, Nathan, and Sam to die in a fire. Rafe, instead of trying to find a way out, loses it and challenges Nate to a sword fight to the death. After an intense battle, Nate emerges victorious, and the two brothers escape the burning ship with no treasure. Nate, Sam, Elena, and Sully make their way back home, where Nate goes back to his shitty-ass born life. It turns out Sam snatched some treasure from the ship before it was uh, destroyed, and with this gold, Elena and Nathan start a new legal archaeology business. The last chapter? We play Crash again. I knew that shit was important. I knew it. Oh, sh shit. It actually was important. Okay. So we discover how Nate's life has changed and what has become of the old fortune hunter. We take control of his daughter, Cassie Drake, when she discovers her parents' dubious past. So, what did you see? Nothing really. Well, just that photo of you two and Sully. 
with a bunch of Spanish-looking treasure and a shotgun. Well, here we end the story of Nathan Drake. It's a pretty good way to end- Oh, no, 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 no. I don't think so. Anyway, it's a pretty- No! Stop it. Stop! Oh, fine. I'll fucking talk about it. Jumping fuckballs, man. Okay. So this article. Where to start? Hmm. Oh, I know. How about that it's a pure fucking satire? I mean, for God's sakes. Fables in which a hero did the work of nations. Sneaking across borders. Driving into areas that are still untouched by government census or GPA satellite. And hopefully walking away with a few crates of gold for his trouble. Are you fucking kidding me? You can't read this shit and take it seriously. Now the question that people have been uh, going ape shit about is, should this review be on Metacritic? No, it shouldn't. Because it's a joke review. And if you take this review seriously, then you obviously didn't read it, and you just saw the score and the title. It's a fucking joke. Stop freaking out about it. Well, now that we talked about that, and covered the six different categories, let's get to the rating. The story is well paced, exciting all the way through, and ends on an amazing note. We are treated with an excellent telling of Drake's past which holds the pieces to his behavior. Each moment is filled with development of the story and development between characters. There are very few moments that don't add up to the story or set up a, some kind of foreshadowing, but the one problem is that the last few levels seem to drag on a, just a little bit longer than they should have. We've already at this point saw what the island has to offer. Maybe a change of scenery, or perhaps a, like a monsoon storm could have been tossed in for more variety. This being said though, each chapter is filled with story implications and character interactions in which in a way are more refreshing than, than just a change of scenery would have been. It still would have been kind of nice. Through the game, we see Nate and Sam grow together as a family further on their adventure and it feels fresh and natural between the two of them. Each character reacts to every situation a little bit differently, and in a way, that fits into their personality. Nate is a cunning, wise-mouthed protagonist, and yet he shows emotion in tune with his personality regardless of the situation he's in. His attitude is matched with a similarly witty Sam, and both are kept in check by old gruff Sully. When the characters interact with one another, they play off each other, adding a more vibrant performance. Each environment stands out as a new, unique area. And every new place Drake visits demonstrates the amount of detail put into the architecture as well as the environment itself. It especially stands out when you're platforming around the levels. It's kind of easy to find yourself hanging from a cliff and appreciating the view rather than climbing up and uh, getting out of the danger zone. The character animations are really smooth and fluid from climbing to running to driving and even just standing still. The game consists of platforming to reach your goal, and along the way we get a great mix of stealth and cover shooting gameplay. The controls are great, climbing and shooting comes naturally, and is consistently fun to explore and make your way through the world of Uncharted 4. New mechanics are introduced to keep the climbing fresh and different from the other games, but the rope swinging is done to death, and it gets very repetitive really fast. Damn it! I get it! He can fucking swing! Why does it have to be done a hundred times? I get I had some multiplayer thing. It's a dumb little thing, uh, but I guess I understand why it's there. It's just annoying. The music adds an element of excitement to the game, and each song on the OST sounds great and puts you in the atmosphere of discovery. The soundtrack balances out really well from exploration to chaotic scenes filled with intense action. Each area of the game sounds exactly like you'd expect. The cities sound busy and are filled with random chatter of people, and the jungles are filled with cawing of birds and the rustling of leaves. It's really immersive. A retired fortune hunter brought back to the game by his brother. This time, the treasure is more than just a treasure, it's about family. Uncharted 4 brings a refreshing take on a lost pirate treasure story by adding more to the mix than just a random hunt for fortune. 
making this adventure about finishing what Nathan Sam's mother couldn't. A fresh new take on Nathan's story with deep character development included. Alright, now that we covered all six categories, here are their points respectively. And the total is a 5.53 out of 6. Well, there's Uncharted 4 reviewed. What do you guys think about the video so far? That's uh, two reviews? Yeah, this is the second one going on. There's, there's two reviews with many more to come. So click subscribe, view more of the content, which is two videos that I have right now. Well, thanks for watching. Bye.